globally, uh, there are many, many people who are uh, in need of pain medications and in need of the skills for controlling pain. I think what we're trying to do is to create a more caring society at every level. You know, that people shouldn't be living uh, on the edge of poverty, that people should be able to get the pain relief, the drugs that they need, they should be able to get the food that they need um, and live in a decent environment. Happiness is not always measured in terms of health. I think you can have sort of very simple environments, but where, you know, because there is care, because there is sharing, that people can still look after each other well. Pain relief is a human right. A country uh, denying its citizens the access to drugs that relieve pain is accepting torture. So as concerned citizens, we have to pressure our governments for, for them to intervene on the international platforms to support access to pain relief. 17% of the world's population consume 90% of the world's morphine. 83% um, of the population only consume nine. Chronic non-communicable diseases are becoming a big issue. Already cancer is causing more deaths globally than HIV, tuberculosis and malaria put together. Obviously we, we do have a social responsibility and it's not just responsibility of physicians. I think that everybody has a, a social responsibility. All healthcare providers, uh, administrators uh, and you know society in general. In a civilized society, if you see somebody falling down near you, your automatic human response is to give a hand to lift the person up. Now, we do it as an individual, but as a collective society, we seem to be turning our back to them. When I say we, I mean the whole world. You can tell a lot about a country by the way it treats its dying. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we do owe it uh, to um, ourselves, basically, and our society to ensure that uh, dying is as important a part as birth, as growing up. It's a part of life. As a society, we don't need to have bad deaths uh, because that's inhumane. But they do occur, and the residual effect of a bad death on a family is, is, is really, really difficult. I mean, if you want to look at it from a purely selfish standpoint, we're talking about creating a system of care and pain relief uh, that's going to impact us. It's going to make a difference, because all of us are going to die. We're all going to die from something, and all the people that we love are going to die for something. Unless you have a system of care in place, tomorrow when you die, uh, you also are going to die a miserable death. I absolutely believe that universal access to palliative care is not only an achievable goal and realistic, it's a human right. Absolutely. There's no question about it. It's again a matter of letting the right people know and understand and accept this, this concept. Why should the only concern be teenagers who um, are stealing drugs and taking them at parties um, and not equally concerned um, with the 72-year-old um, decent farmer with terrible pain from his prostate cancer? who takes three of these drugs a day and can work every day. In uh, Turkey, we are working at the level of the Ministry of Health, and they accepted it. So 80 million people from next month on will have the drugs that are needed. Beautiful. So we've now seen that these drugs have become available in some countries. We've seen that cancer patients have access to these drugs. Where we see the difficulties is, is in um, resource poor countries where there appears to be no access basically um, again because of this very strong regulatory environment. As human beings we should not be able to stand by and watch people suffer when we have the tools to, to relieve that suffering and I think it's as basic as that it's the equivalent of watching someone get mugged in the alley and we're all standing around watching and everybody seems to, to be waiting for someone to do something and I think at the end of the day you know the answer is it's, it's up to us to do it.